Hello, I'm Dr. Michael Gunn from Duke University. In the next two lectures, I will give you a broad overview of innate and adaptive immune responses while highlighting some of the key points about how the immune system works. By the end of these lectures, we will have constructed a map of the immune system that will serve to orient you through the rest of the course. After this lecture, you should be able to explain the innate immune system and how it differs from the adaptive immune system describe how we detect pathogens in the body, and explain the events that comprise innate immune response. Our immune system evolved in response to a very specific problem. This problem was that no matter what stage of evolution we had reached, other organisms tried to infect us. These other organisms took a wide variety of forms, including viruses, parasites, fungi, and bacteria. Each of these organisms had different mechanisms of getting into us and causing harm. Thus, our ancestors had to come up with a variety of strategies to fight off these invaders. The solution that evolution came up with is similar to what our government uses today. Just like the government has different agencies that each pursue a different defense strategy, our immune system has different compartments that each take a different approach to fighting pathogens. First, governments put up barriers to entry. You can't just stroll across national borders. You encounter a multitude of different physical and functional barriers. In the same way, our bodies are designed to bar the entry of pathogens using physical barriers and various mechanical and chemical barriers. Second, governments have systems like airport security to recognize and respond to nonspecific threats. In our bodies, this function is provided by the innate immune system. The goal is to prevent infections from becoming established by using simple pattern recognition to initiate immediate responses. This system has no memory and will respond in the same way every time you encounter a specific pathogen. Third, governments have systems to identify, track, and fight very specific threats. This is the role of the adaptive immune system. Our bodies adapt to specific threats. The response is highly specific and adapted to the particular threat. It takes some time to develop, but remembers the pathogens it has seen, allowing a more rapid and robust response upon re-exposure. The key point here is that the immune system is composed of two overlapping compartments, the innate immune system and the adaptive immune system. The innate immune system recognizes and responds to nonspecific patterns, while the adaptive immune system recognizes and responds to molecules that are specific to individual pathogens. So how does this actually work? There is a characteristic series of events that occurs in almost all immune responses. First, we have barriers to entry that are designed to keep pathogens out of our bodies. If these barriers fail, pathogens enter our bodies and must be detected or recognized. Pathogens are recognized by our cells. These can be stromal cells, including epithelial cells, endothelial cells, or fibroblasts. These can also be various immune cells that are resident in our tissues. These include mast cells, dendritic cells, resident macrophages, or innate lymphocytes, all of which we will discuss in detail. Pathogens are also recognized by various circulating mediators. The major one is complement, but there are others. These provide an immediate effector response. So how does the immune system detect pathogens? Primarily, it looks for molecules that are made by pathogens, but not by us. These pathogen-associated molecular patterns come in various forms and are danger signals detected by what we refer to as pattern recognition receptors. These pattern recognition receptors can be receptors that activate cells or soluble molecules with immediate activities. Cellular pattern recognition receptors include cell surface receptors that recognize extracellular pathogens or intracellular receptors that get activated when cells are infected. We will discuss specific pattern recognition receptors later. There are also soluble pattern recognition receptors. The major example is complement. Complement is a cascade of plasma proteins, much like the clotting cascade. Binding of complement to microbes triggers a cascade with many products. Some products have direct killing effects, such as making holes in cell membranes. Some recruit cells, and some tag the cells for phagocytosis. 
Note that there are other soluble pattern recognition receptors. When cells detect pathogens, they become activated and sound the alarm. Alarm signals produced by activated cells include cytokines, which can activate other immune cells, chemokines, which control immune cell migration and localization, and various other vasoactive and inflammatory agents. These alarm signals stimulate inflammation, the classic signs of this being calor, dolor, rubor, and tumor, or in English, heat, pain, redness, and swelling. These symptoms are caused by vasodilatation, increased permeability, extravasation of white blood cells, and stimulation of pain receptors. The presence of alarm signals, along with tissue inflammation, stimulates the recruitment of additional innate immune cells from the circulation. These include neutrophils and monocytes, which become macrophages. These represent the major phagocytic populations. Other recruited cells include natural killer cells, eosinophils, and basophils, which we will discuss later. This cellular recruitment results in a marked increase in the number of innate immune cells in the inflamed tissues. Much of immune function relies on getting the right cells to the right place at the right time. This is orchestrated by various chemotactic signals and adhesion molecules, which we will discuss soon. The presence or absence of specific immune cell types and tissues can be diagnostic for specific diseases. Immune cell accumulation is also an indicator of immune system activity. Once innate immune cells enter inflamed tissues, they perform a number of effector functions. These include phagocytosis, essentially eating pathogens, and cytotoxicity, or killing pathogens in infected cells. They do this by producing reactive oxygen species, various destructive enzymes, antimicrobial peptides, and additional cytokines and chemokines, which further stimulate inflammation. At the same time, the soluble pattern recognition receptors exert immediate effector functions to directly attack the pathogens. Together, these steps form a map of a typical innate immune response. In some cases, this response by itself is sufficient to eliminate pathogens. In other cases, it will keep you alive until your body has a chance to develop an adaptive immune response, which we will cover in the next talk.